Please go hard or go home. But Joe, it's practice. Yeah. Oh, too well, mate. Oh, we're not And there's contact day. What's happening guys and welcome to your Access All Areas Pass, the Driftmasters European Championship. We are now at round five and we are in Germany at Ferropolis. This place is like a movie set. Now there are two events going on this weekend and our wild cards for Driftmasters will be picked from the Iron Drift King event today. Let's go find Marcel who can tell us a bit more. So Marcel, it's gonna be a busy weekend, right? Oh, it is already, it is already. But uh, hey, that's great, right? It's the second time this event is happening and uh, we're super pumped for the action today and tomorrow as well. And our wild cards are going to be picked from the Iron Drift King, aren't they? That's correct. The uh, position 1, 2 and 3 of our event tonight will be competing tomorrow against uh, Europe's best in Drift Masters. Always the wild cards that come in and like change up the entire championship for us. Yeah, but you know, that this is, I think, those are stories you cannot write, you know? Absolutely. Those, those unexpected uh, situations and fans go nuts for it, you know? Everyone wants to see people that no one knows winning. That's a cool thing. That's what keeps drifting like the best sport in the world for me. Absolutely. Drifting is, is, everything can happen all the time and I, I think that's why we love drifting. <laughs> Absolutely. Well that was Marcel, one of the organisers of the Iron Drift King and that's a much better way to get round this place that is absolutely massive. We're going to follow the stories of the three wild cards that make it into the Driftmasters event tomorrow. But for now, it's practice time. Yeah, it's quite fun to finally have a, a European Championship run back on home soil and it's awesome to give something back to all the amazing fans out here and it's a special venue, a special event for me because I won last year and I'm really excited for that and really thankful for all these fans joining us and yeah, it's good. Feeling pumped this weekend? Yeah, really pumped. We finally get the car dialed in, feeling really good on the track and yeah, we will see how it goes tomorrow but we will push really hard. What makes this round unique is there's a big gap in between the Iron Drift King and the Drift Masters event on the Saturday, which means some of the drivers get some time to take a little five minutes to themselves and go for a swim. Oh, hey, she wants to swim. Becky wants to swim. Jump, jump, now. Go ahead. jump, jump. Ready? Yeah. Push yourself. Come on, Penny. Go on. Olympic dive. <laughs> Don't be doing that. Glasses are good, so if right. I got into a cage with lions and I got clawed, you'd help tell me that was my own fault. Yeah, I know. I get <laughs> <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> Change of outfit was most definitely required after ending up in the lake. It's now time for the Iron yes, King Top 32 Wonderful. battles. And remember, our three wild cards are going to be picked from whoever wins these battles tonight. It ends at around 11 p.m., so it's going to go on all evening. I'm going to make sure that I am dried off and see who makes it in tomorrow's show.
After some amazing driving through the night from the Iron Drift King drivers, a top three of Yuha Poitelasco, Pavel Trella, and Niels Vida made it into our DMET qualifiers and given the opportunity to battle it out. So it's game day here at Ferropolis and last night we had the Iron Drift King decide who our three wildcards that we're going to take into the Drift Masters event today. Now, there was action all the way into the night, followed by a nice little beach party. So the guys that didn't make it through will definitely be having a lion this morning. But our three that made it in are in practice now to find out what it's like to go up against our Driftmasters drivers. Let's go catch up with Pavel to see what his thoughts are ahead of today. Uh, a little bit tired because we had some problems with the clutch yesterday, so we go to sleep like uh, 3 a.m. this morning. So okay. Not very long sleep, but we are ready for a fight, so just finger crossed. I saw you driving yesterday, you were really pushing some of the other guys around the track. You ready for some big battle today? Uh, yes, yesterday from the second battle I had problems with my clutch, so it wasn't as uh, fast and as good as it should be. So I hope uh, today we will be much, much better. Well, we'll be following you and we'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, I've heard the phrase go hard or go home, but Joe, it's practice. <laughs> no. yeah, well. um, actually, we made some changes to the car that worked really well. Okay. My first lap out was quite decent, I would mm -hmm. say. And I knew I had to get a little bit closer to the first outside zone, which yep. I did. What I did not know exactly was how many marbles there are out there. Okay, marbles, like, is that what it yeah, was? The yeah, the rubber, the okay. rubber bits from all the tires shredded throughout the weekend. Okay. And that pretty much caught me off guard. And just speed um, you up, spin you into like, push yeah, you Yeah, you don't have any traction on those. And I've not been out that far all weekend yet yeah. on the first outside. So I actually touched the wall with the wing. Yeah. And just a bit too yeah. much speed yeah, for the, the space left. So, yeah, it was quite a substantial hit. It didn't look as bad on video, yeah. but it was quite bad. You take a bit of a tap, you're all right though? Yeah, I'm all right. Okay. I'm going to feel it tomorrow. Okay. Like, I guess, but well, I'm all right. Get for some cold packs today. on there and that, you know? I'd be fine. I'd be fine. I just put some champagne on there. Also. Champ yeah, well, that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> that's what we're hoping for. But your team, come on, like, we it's were with Those guys are just insane. Like, I wasn't. I, I didn't even make it back to the paddock yet and they had everything lined up like all the spare parts they were coming up with plans on where we can put the chains on to pull the car back into a that. sort of straight line it's like, it a, like a digger yeah. attached to the truck just yeah, yeah. pulling it back and out stretch everything back in place and fingers crossed that the suspension is not too much damage we got some damage on the rear suspension yeah we're now hoping that the front is not too bad because we have most of the parts for rear suspension, not yeah. all of them for the front, so okay. fingers crossed, but the guys are fingers just crossed. crazy. Well, I just checked They're in crazy. with Robbie, he was having lunch, saying, yeah, everything's done, he'll be fine, he'll be out. So good luck yeah. for your qualifying run, we'll be watching. Thank you. All right, then. I'm sat just after the finishing line. We're still in the middle of qualifying, but what I am pleased to say is that Joe Hutunji got his car back together and he's heading to the line for his second qualifying run. Fingers crossed that he can put a good number on the board. Right now, it's looking like James Dean in first, Jack Shanahan in second, and Tor Arne Kavir bringing in the third spot. But as I said, fingers crossed, he can make his way up the leaderboard. Next up, James Dean. Well, he can do no wrong here. He's the top qualifier so far. He's got a 94. Where do you go from there? And then, then I think everyone needs to take two steps back for the first couple of rows here, because James Dean's going to try and improve on a 94. What can he do? 
I think the fact to look at this is James Dean has hardly any damage on the back end of that BMW. Wow, as he runs the back end along the wall, and Dean not messing around, absolute precision. Fires into five, gets nice and personal as he just uses a little bit of left foot brake to set that car up for six, and across the line goes James Dean, and he is a machine, because that was so perfect. James Dean, what does he score? A 99. Wow. What do, you, what do you even say? What do you even well, what say? What do you say? That is the highest score we have ever seen at Driftmasters European Championship. Here's a qualifying lineup that I have definitely seen before. It seems like these two guys, considering their neighbours, are constantly battling with each other. And it's happened for years now, isn't it? Mm, definitely. Well, we've got it's kind of like one of those things that you just, you can't really get sick of because you enjoy doing it, you know? Yeah. I prefer to know if we can get to the final and actually oh, well, battle at least we're a single run. One, two in qualifying, so if we're both lucky and get there, yeah. then it's a proper battle in the final. I feel like that would be amazing, that'd be a dream. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if you guys got into battle, there would be no holds bars. Oh, oh no, we, oh. well, we, we're actually kind of lucky that we don't practice together that often because when we do, it's usually like, oh, stupid. We're trading paint always, <laughs> just yeah. having, having fun, but the good thing about it is, you know, you're pushing me, I'm pushing you, it's more, it, it, you know, we want to... Train more, like, yeah. Yeah. it makes you learn and push harder, so... It's all love out on the track, just to recap you guys, we've got James in first place with a 99 run. Bearing in mind you can get 100 points, you got 99. How Very do you happy manage that. that? Just everything worked out, like Jack will tell you, we take so many risks on every single lap, and we're all trying to get that almost perfect run, but for it to all fall into place in one lap is, is very hard to do, but sometimes it happens. Luck of the Irish, right? Yeah, something like that I'd say. <laughs> Skill of the Irish, I'd say. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just getting ready to start our Top 32 evening show, and I've had a call over the radio to say, unfortunately, Greg McKeever's had a bit of a bump on the wall. Now, this is every driver's nightmare because he's getting himself ready for competition, and he's just gone out there and practiced, and potentially put himself out of the race. I'm just going to catch up with Dave Egan because he's been down here to have a chat with Dwayne and figure out what's actually going on. So this is the dangerous part of the weekend, it's top 32 practice, so everyone's qualified. Well, they went out two teammates, they hit the wall, Kevin hit Dwayne, Dwayne went in the hard, hardest I've ever seen anyone go in the wall so far, so there's like 60 Irish people trying to get the car back. There. This is one of the things that I love about drifting, you see we've got teams over here that are technically going to meet each other in a top 32 battle, but they're mucking in to make sure that their competitor gets to the line, because at the end of the day, it's all about putting it down on the track, not forfeiting in practice. It's wicked, I love it, man. You guys have flappy disc, if you know what? I'm done. It's flappy. No. Sending this. We are halfway through our top 32 battles now, and I'm keeping an eye on everything that's going on via my ladders here. Now, our wild cards, Poitilaxco has gone through to meet James Dean in the next round, and we've still yet to see whether Pavel Trella will actually beat our championship leader right now with Dwayne McKeever. It's gonna be a tight battle, but we'll see what happens. Here is an even bigger battle for the championship. Dwayne McKeever, they had to tie this car to two trucks to straighten the back end of it, and it's not even straight, as he now tries to hold his lead of the championship against the man finishing second place on the podium yesterday in the Iron Drift King, Pavel Trella. McKeever makes a dive onto the back of that little Opal GT as Trella fires it into the outside zone. McKeever shallows up to try and gain that proximity right now, but Trella is absolutely flying. McKeever through the smoke onto the back end. Trella in the wall. Trella's in the wall. And there's contact, Dave. Oh, that's only the top 32, Ian. How can I take much more? This has been the most emotional top 32 in the, in the history of drifting. With a mistake from Pavel Trella, this marked an unfortunate end to his evening and his journey from the Iron Drift King. Dust is starting to set here at Peropolis, and my goodness, what a top 32 battle set that has been. We're heading into our top 16, so right now what you'll see is the top 16 parade coming round. I'm going to go over and speak to some of the drivers because this is where it's all starting to hot up. I'm now just getting a message in my ear that I need to bring the microphone back up, so I'm going to have to try and... I'm just really excited for that one now. The 
Northern Irish driver now sits on the line. His championship hopes in the balance. Well, he's got to do it here and now. He's got to go to the door of that bright yellow BMW. Good thing he can see it with these lights as they come off the line. McKeever, he's left a little bit here. Cherba's got the jump on it, but a very shallow line from Cherba. He's on the wrong qualifying line. Both of these drivers a little messy into that first corner. McKeever's got absolutely no proximity right now as he tries to find some sort of grip at the back end of that car, but he's getting left even more by Cherba right now. Does McKeever have a problem? Seven, maybe six, seven car lengths between these two guys. It's very hard. Big mistake on entry, but I don't know if that's going to balance it out, Ian. Unfortunately, that wasn't Dwayne's battle. This is the thing here. Once it comes down to night, it changes the conditions. With all the smoke, it's very easy to get lost, and that's exactly what happened. Dwayne went into out of zone two, got a little bit behind Cherba, and unfortunately just got lost in the smoke. It's a shame, but we fight on. And if you know what, it's turbo power versus V8, it's Poland versus They're taking a look under the car as Bagsy got on oil leak. I guess the thumbs up. Now the fight's on as Bagsy reels in the rear quarter of Paul Polinski's car. Nice transition from Bagsy, takes it to the door. This is the fight we expected from both of these guys as they take an aim at third and first, our second on the podium, our first. Who knows? It's going to go down to the final corner as Bagsy. Oh, straight from Paul Polinski. Did the car shut down? Did it wow. shut down? Wow. It looks like to me we're having a repeat of Riga. The English underdog has come through and prospered. Bagsy has made it all the way up the ladder into the final with James Dean. Just two on the line, the UK versus Ireland, and Dean to lead in Bagsy for the final runs of the night. Here we go. James Dean, but Bagsy's still in the fight. We are going to go red to green, and here we go. Bagsy to lead in Dean as they come to the gears, and Dean's all over Bagsy through the first corner. Wow, contact almost between two cars as Dean starts to hunt down. Bagsy through that. Bagsy tagging the wall, lifting the bullet. Look at this. They're both throwing absolutely everything into this last run. As Dean makes one more last huge dive into that last corner. Bagsy now starts to put a bit of a gap on. Look at Dean. He's all his first Driftmasters European Championship round of the year. Well, it's always highs and lows with drifting. You know, last round we watched you go out in the top 32, and now you are here, number one, on the podium. What's going through your mind right now? I'm just so, so happy. It's hard to put into words. Like, we've worked so hard with the new car. Struggled, last event, small technical failure, knocked out before we even started, pretty much. And I was hungry this weekend. Uh, went out and qualified first this morning, and uh, managed to bring it all the way to the finals uh, battling Bagsy who was driving amazing as well this weekend I gave it 110% and uh, it just went our way so feels amazing uh, it's great to win in the new car in the first year and uh, man I'm, I'm just so happy and proud of of my team and everyone that supports me and it's just a great way to go into the last event well that was another Driftmasters weekend round five done we've got one left Mondello Park round six i can't believe it's going to be all over nearly but this means there is going to be a big fight on their hands because it's all so close at the top end i'm really excited i can't wait i'm going to go celebrate with the guys and i'll catch you guys again soon